Hello there. How many of you have kids? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. How many of you have been kids? <laughs> that is a trick question. But I love that participation. Thank you so much. So all of you do acknowledge that and that's so good you're here in this room and some of you who haven't raised your hands remember you have been kids yeah remember and remember to remember this word remember because i'm going to be talking about remembering in a bit as i talk to you about mental health and all you need to know to set it in place once and forever. My name is Sandeep Nath and I'm really glad that you made time to be here because you could have been anywhere listening to anything, doing anything, but you chose to prioritize a talk about mental health and everything you need to know about it. And there are three things that you're going to definitely get away from this talk here today. So thanks for being here. First, we're going to talk about what is mental health really? You know, the whole, uh, the whole gamut of stress and well-being and uh, uh, the, whole, the whole jargon that has evolved after the pandemic. It's almost become fashionable to talk about. But what really is at the core of mental health? That's the first thing that you're going to be very clear on, which is going to help you and your teams and your families as you talk about this very important subject. Second, would you like that? If you like that, just raise your hands, do something, let me know. Yeah, awesome, thank you so much. <laughs> Terrific. The second thing is I'm going to share with you one thing that will keep your mental health in check. It is, it is some, just one thing. Imagine the entire base of jargon about mental health is resident on one thing and you're going to be getting an insider view of that one thing now if you'd like that just type l in the chat box for the like and oh that's a lot of l's hey good i love this participation so awesome terrific and the third thing three things you're going to take away the third thing is that i'm going to share with you five things which are from the new economic forum, which are habits, which are ways that we do things that are going to keep your mental health on top, always. This is like researched, proven, this is what the new economy is all about. So five things, just type five in the chat box if that works for you, because then you know exactly how to stay mentally well, always. Now, I uh, know some of you might be wondering who am I to tell you about all this. So quickly, I've worked with more than 2,000 professionals on mental health, stress and well-being. Over 46 cities across four continents in the world, grabbing a lot since 2016. And personally, as many as 15 years ago, I found that out of all the six dimensions of life, which is the physical, spiritual, financial, social, and emotional. I was at rock bottom in all of these in my corporate career. The only thing that I had going for me was the mental dimension, the mind. And that has brought me out of there and taken me around the world and all of that. So I think I'm pretty qualified from that point of view, from my personal experience and my own stories, to get this essential subject across to you. So let's get started, shall we? I love those thumbs up, so quick, I and mean, even without my having to say it, thank you, awesome. You're a great audience. Now the thing is, as an audience, remember, the word remember, you have to remind me to remember to remember. You remember the times when you had this issue with the mind, the mood swings, the insecurities, the fears, the irritations which became angers, the times when you went out of control 
and the times when you felt things are just breaking apart. Humpty Dumpty. You mean kids, right? <laughs> How many of you said this poem as a kid or taught your kids this poem? Remember? Let's say it together. Huh? It's fun. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a big fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men, come on with me, couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. We are so worried that when we fall, when it breaks apart, it will break apart for all time. And that is why we have mental problems. Because we don't allow ourselves to express. You see, this is you, the Humpty Dumpty. This is your mind. And this is the world around you. And the world around you is just waiting to make an omelette of you. At least that's what you think. You know, with these spiky spikes, they are going to go into you. They are going to bang you. Feels relatable. And so we keep ourselves cloisters in, in our shell. That delicate shell of our ego. I'm strong on the outside, but inside we know exactly what's there. Don't we? And the world comes along. It is not forgiving. And it bashes us. And again. And again. And it just gets into us, but we can stay standing. Why? Because we've done something on our inside. Everything you need to know about mental health is about inside. Mind training. I come from a Buddhist background as was introduced and uh, I was exposed to ancient energy wisdom from various parts of the Orient, especially Tibetan Lamas. And <coughs> And what I understood is that the focus that they have on training the mind is overriding in Buddhist philosophy. And because when you have trained the mind, you have become your own master. That's it. When you master yourself, you master what you do, which is your karma. When you master your karma, you master how you are reborn and what ever happens throughout lifetimes, you become your master. So that's one thing about mental health, the one thing, knowing how to gain inner power. Inner power all over, not just here, here, the heart mind, here, the gut mind. This is our energy center, this is our feeling center, this is our logic center. Powering all that, that's the core of being mentally healthy. Now question number two, how do you do that? What's the one thing that we, we can do to bring this mind training into action, to make it happen for us? And you know what? Again, the Buddha taught that. He laid the foundation for that. But incorporating that wisdom into our modern business and lifestyle, into our context today, is what you and I have to uh, have grown to know as mindfulness. <laughs> mindfulness is a very fashionable term, right? We, uh, we have our own ideas about moment-to-moment -moment awareness and this guy's, uh, this Western guru's way of telling us about it and this and that. But let's keep it simple. If you want to practice something, if you're going to come to five habits soon, you have to practice simple stuff. Remember that the meaning of the word mindfulness relates back to the word mind. And you know what Rajini Khan says? Mind it. Right? <laughs> mind it. Means what? means remember 
I am Rajini Kant. So don't mess with me. Right? When you are going up the stairs, somewhere on a low ceiling, it says, mind your head. What does that mean? It means remember that you have a head. So that you don't bang that head against the ceiling. That's it. So when you are mindful, what you are full of is your ability to remember at that moment what it is that you are doing. Like the Zen masters say, when you walk, walk. When you wash, wash. When you eat, eat. But how many times do we catch ourselves walking and uh, talking, walking and eating, driving and eating? So many times. Which is why we impose more stresses on ourselves. We increase the demands that we are working against. Why do we do that? Because we've forgotten to be mindful of doing what we're doing. It may, it may seem to take longer, but it works much better for you. Let's say when eating, eat. Just eat. Savour the taste. Allow the teeth to do the job of pulping whatever is going in. So that when it goes in, not only have you savoured the taste and digested it properly, you have also allowed the stomach and the intestines and the enzymes to work less. And if those parts of the body are working less, they are consuming less energy. And so you are left with a lot more energy to work with through the rest of the day. Otherwise, after the meal, you just sit <laughs> too much. And you waste so much time. You see, everybody's got 24 hours. The time is outside us, we cannot control it. We can only control what's inside us. And what's inside us is our energy. So instead of wasting our energy on letting the stomach process the food, we spend an extra five minutes processing the food properly when eating, eat mindfully, remembering what it is that you are doing. And boom! We've got a lot more energy for our mental activity, for our physical activity, for interacting with people, for handling situations and everything else. And speaking of that, the NEF, the UK government's foresight program, which has concluded about those five aspects, which are habits, which are things that you can do to build your mental capital and your well-being. Pretty similar to the renewalism habits if you've been through that. But just these five extracted more or less out of renewalism in a sense. First, connect with people. Do not live in your silo. Do not be a loner. Second, be active. Do things uh, physically. Uh, involve yourself in uh, running, activities, exercise. Because the body and the mind are connected and lead to uh, overall well-being. Third, be curious. Take notice of things. Keep, keep checking what's going on. Fourth, keep learning and growing and innovating and doing something which, which builds you up from inside. Never forget, it's all inside you. Five, give. Give with an open heart. Give things that are free to give. Give a smile. Give help. Give encouragement. Any way that you contribute outside of yourself is the way that you build the inside of yourself. Even the Buddha has said, the way to liberation is working in the interest and the benefit of all sentient beings. So on that note, can't end on a wiser note, I say goodbye and great mental well-being.